Good morning, elementary friends. I hope that you've got your Bible and that you are ready for another great story and challenge from God's Word this morning. We're going to be in the book of Matthew, which you will find in the New Testament toward the end of your Bible, in chapter 5, in verse 41 particularly. We're going to learn how it and what it means to go the extra mile for those around us. Let's pray and then we'll get started. Father God, I thank you for this day. God, I thank you for this time that we can open your word and be challenged, God, to live a life like you would. Lord, to live a life that honors you and um, pleases you, but God, that also points those around us to you. So God, as we open your word and you show us how to go the extra mile, Lord, I pray that you would speak to boys and girls across our city and across our world to go the extra mile for those around us. And these things I ask in Jesus' holy name. Amen. All right, friends, grab your Bible. Like I said, Matthew 5 in verse 41, and I'll see you here in just a minute. Have a great time with worship. you 
super fans, my name is Haley, and if you're like me, you love all kinds of sports! And you love cheering on your favorite people. And you do this because you really love kindness. Kindness is showing others that they are valuable by how you treat them. One thing I've learned as a super fan is that kindness isn't the same for everyone. You have to use different kinds of cheering for different kinds of people. For instance, you don't want to use your air horn at the golf tournament. Uh, I learned that one the hard way. You have to cheer one way for a baseball team. Yeah. Another way for tennis and then soccer and even racing a lot of different ways to show kindness so if you want to show someone they're valuable you can cheer for them or like you'll see in today's story you can give a little extra i better get ready to cheer on the bible story ah yes good bible story very well done the Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 41. Jesus was rocking the world. Everywhere he traveled, he told about the good news of God's kingdom. He called people to turn away from the wrong things they had done, and he healed sick people. Great crowds began to follow Jesus. So one day, he went up on a mountainside and sat down to share with them how God wants us to live. Blessed are those who are humble. They will be given the earth. God created us. He knows that we were designed to find joy and be at peace when we follow His ways, when we see and treat others the way God does. So, right in the middle of what's often called the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said this. Suppose someone forces you to go one mile. Go two miles with them. Okay. What? <laughs> to our ears, this probably sounds like a word problem, or maybe like our PE teacher telling us to go run laps. But the people listening to Jesus knew exactly what he meant. They all lived under the rule of the Caesar in Rome. The Romans had conquered many, many territories. Judea had become a little backwater province of the Roman Empire, and Roman soldiers were sent to keep order. Jesus and all the people he taught lived under Roman rule, and they had to obey the law of Rome, including this one. I decree that any Roman soldier may force a Jew to carry his pack for precisely one mile. If you're thinking, what's the big deal? Think again. Being a Roman soldier was not for wimps. Sometimes the packs they carried weighed as much as 100 pounds. It took real grit and stamina to march for miles carrying that much gear. So it wasn't unusual for a soldier to call on some random person along the road to haul their pack for one mile or about a thousand steps. And if that person says no, well, it was considered an act of rebellion against the empire. Now, imagine you're an everyday, ordinary average Joe or Joseph. You're hiking along the road, maybe you're on your way to Jerusalem. When you look up and in the distance, you see a Roman soldier heading your way. I don't know about you, but I think I'd turn right around and head back the other way or get off the road and head into a grove of olive trees or maybe just avoid eye contact at all costs. But maybe none of that works. The soldier stops calls you out and you have no choice but to look up. The soldier orders you to take his heavy pack and haul it along for a whole mile. You can't fight the empire. 
So, you pick up the pack. And it's forward march. You're probably counting your steps the whole way. 58, 59, just waiting until you can drop that pack. 681, 682, holding out until you can get away from this soldier that sees you as scum. 998, 999, 1000. <gasps> That's it, you're free. Roman law says that that soldier can't make you go more than one mile. So you can toss that pack like it's hot and run on home. <laughs> Except, Jesus says something else. Suppose someone forces you to go one mile. Go two miles with them. You had to carry that pack the first mile. You didn't have a choice. But now you get to choose. And if you choose to take that pack another mile, it says a lot. It says, I matter. I'm valuable just like you, and I can make my own choices. But it also says you matter. This is a really heavy load you have to carry. And I'm gonna help you not because I have to, but because I choose to. Go the extra mile doesn't just mean go big or go home. Going the extra mile means that you make a choice to help someone, to be kind. You choose an action that says, I'm doing this for you because I want to, not because I have to. And I'm doing this because you are made in the image of God. And that makes you valuable to Him and to me. So, you may not live in an empire, but you can still go the extra mile. Jesus' disciple, Matthew, wrote down one of Jesus' most famous sermons, sometimes called the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus taught so many things about kindness, like... Let your light shine so others can see it! Woo! Do not judge other people. And Jesus also said this, suppose someone forces you to go one mile, go two miles with them. That's where we get the phrase, go the extra mile. Huh. Nowadays, people probably aren't forcing you to go a mile, but the idea of what Jesus was saying still works. Going the extra mile means being kinder than you have to be. It means making your bed like you're told and cleaning the rest of your room even if you aren't told. Sometimes it means doing something you know you should before you're told and with a good attitude, but you don't do it for the applause. You go the extra mile because when you follow Jesus, you should be pointing people to him. People can see how much Jesus loves them through the kindness that you show. So here's the one thing to remember today. Be kinder than you have to be. Show people kindness even when they may not earn it. Give them a little extra kindness they don't see coming. You can be their super fan! I did not see that coming. Goodbye, everybody! <laughs> Woo! time opening God's word and singing praise and just jumping around and having a great time uh, with our worship. Um, I am so excited uh, to be sharing this with you. I love that I get to come to you um, through social media and through our website every week um, for those who are still not coming to worship with us in person. But I do want to remind you that church is open. Um, everything is open and we are having um, a great time. We are doing great things in God's house and I don't want you to miss out. Um, so families come and be a part. 
come um, enjoy the fellowship and the laughter and the fun um, that we have and experience all that God um, has for us in this new year. Um, I just want to remind, um, remind you kiddos, go the extra mile uh, for those around you. Preschoolers, remember who loves you. That's right. Jesus loves you. 100% loves you all the way. And um, elementary and pre-teens, pre uh, remember going the extra mile. Yes, you get to help somebody um, and it might make you feel good inside, but more importantly, it shows people around you that you love a true living God and it makes them curious. They want to know him. And so I pray that everything that you do, um, yes, brings honor and glory to the Lord, but also points others, those who don't know him, would, come to, would want to know uh, Jesus because of how you treat them. Um, so be a fan of humans this week, friends, and um, be kind. Uh, go the extra mile. And I love you. I hope you have a great week. Uh, let's pray and then we'll, we'll be finished. My Father Jesus, again, I just thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you for giving us Jesus and loving us more than we could ever imagine. And Lord, I pray that, um, that today's word would truly challenge all those who listened. Lord, not just uh, the boys and girls who listened, but their parents um, the whole family, Lord, that we would um, learn to be a, the light in this dark world, Lord, that we would truly stand up for what is right, that we would stand up and go the extra mile for those around us so that others, when they look at us, they see that we are different because we love you. Father God, I thank you for loving us. And Lord, again, I just pray that everything we do bring honor and glory to your name and points others to the kingdom and to a relationship with you. And these things I ask in Jesus' holy name. Amen. All right, friends, have an amazing week and enjoy the rest of your day.